Hey everyone. Uh, my name is Stephanie Tanzer. I'm Director of Product Management here at Pendo. I'm really excited today to talk to you about data and specifically product analytics. Uh, so my talk is, is really around increasing adoption uh, with product analytics. The agenda today is first we're going to just talk about the basics. Uh, what do you need to know uh, to understand product analytics and how to use it? And then we're gonna go through several different examples of how to use product analytics in practice. I'll start with running experiments, move into feature success metrics and in with sunsetting a product or a feature. And lastly, we're gonna to touch on how do you get started with this? Um, what are the first steps that you need to take in order to become excellent at product analytics? So let's touch on the basics here. Um, product analytics, you know, first off the world runs on data. Uh, if you go into, uh, you know, you watch a, a public company uh, give some sort of uh, presentation, maybe it's a quarterly earnings report, you're going to hear them talk about numbers. You'll hear revenue numbers, you'll hear conversion, customer acquisition cost, win rates. Uh, these are important numbers to determine whether or not the business is successful. Uh, it helps move the business forward, it helps companies decide are, where are they going to grow, where are they going to focus on. When it comes down to a product and specifically features within the, pro within the product, it, it can be very challenging to tie business metrics to feature success. And so we use leading indicators or like product usage, stickiness, feature adoption, quality performance in order to try to tie what we're doing on the product side to the overall business metrics. And so I think it's really important to understand how you can think about measuring success, how you can start to tie those things together so that you're building the right product that is gonna help your overall company uh, reach their business goals. So first, what, what is product analytics? Uh, when you think about users interacting with apps, websites, devices, they are clicking on features, they're logging in, they're uh, you know, spending time in, in certain parts of the applications. And all of that data can be recorded, whether it's time-stamped information or just click details. And through the, the recording of those events, you can create insights. You can determine what is it that they're doing and how do you start to use that data then to inform any decision about how you wanna improve that product experience and ideally drive business outcomes. This data, this usage data pairs really nicely with user surveys, net promoter score, anything qualitative, maybe you're doing a usability test on a new product and you get some valuable data from that. You can use the behavioral data to really help determine where do we take this product? How do we make it better over the long run? So a few areas, uh, basic uh, ways of using this data, uh, I'm gonna walk through now. Uh, so the first one is trends, uh, which is really how are my users engaging with my product over time. Um, so imagine being able to graph overall engagement with certain features or pages, maybe compare them against other parts of the product so that you can look at uh, you know, the first 30 days of two features and, and determine whether or not you've, you've successfully uh, launched that feature. Maybe you can compare engagement with a single part of the product over two different periods of time to see if engagement is growing or if it's decreasing and, and what you might do about it. How do you take that information then to, to make some decisions around, do you invest more in that feature? Do you stop investment? Do you move on to something else? Funnels, uh, so how users are moving through a specific sequence of steps. So imagine uh, you want to understand a workflow, a specific workflow, you know, a uh, user goes, going uh, and, and uh, clicking on this page, click using this feature, then navigating to another page. And so you can use a funnel to allow you to understand when you uh, are looking at a specific workflow. When you look at a specific workflow, uh, what, it, uh, what, what is the overall drop off? Are users actually completing that workflow? And if not, how do you then improve uh, the experience so that they are able to reach their goal within your product. Paths is a nice pair to funnels. It's very similar, but there are some, some uh, differences here. So paths takes a look at what steps your users are taking throughout the product. One valuable use case of a path is uh, help documentation. 
what are all the ways that users are asking for help? Where do they go? What are they doing right before they ask for help? And then how can you use that information to improve the experience, maybe add some uh, guidance to their experience in order to ensure that they don't necessarily need to take the step of asking for help. Uh, but the nice thing about paths is it's very open-ended. You either start from a starting point or from an ending point, and then it gives you all of the paths that users are taking across your application. Uh, so that you can get some valuable information about, about what they're doing within your product itself. Retention and stickiness. So how frequently are users using my product over time? Uh, so retention is takes a look at cohorts, uh, different cohorts who have used your product in that given period of time or a feature. And then what's the likelihood that they're going to continue using that product feature month after month after month. And so you can determine what is the overall retention for that specific cohort that used it within that time period. Stickiness is slightly different. Uh, it takes a look at uh, all monthly active users that interacted with a, a page or a product or feature, uh, and then takes a ratio of all users that were interacted with it daily to give you an understanding of how many of your monthly active users are returning on a daily basis and how you can improve that item over time. So those are some basics. And now I wanna move into um, some discussion around how to practically use product analytics. And so I wanna use this uh, flow, which is pretty common in products development and products building. Uh, first you discover, right? You, you have to understand what products exist, what your users are looking to achieve, what they can't achieve today. You gotta to get really precise on the problem. And that takes a ton of discovery effort. The second area is build. What is it? Uh, you know, what, when they're actually building a feature, they know the problem they're solving and they just need to get that feature out and see if it's actually meeting the problem, uh, solving the problem in front of them. And the third area is sunset. Uh, a product has been uh, out in the wild, feature has been out in the wild for, for, for a long time. It has served its purpose. Now it's time to actually remove it from the product uh, and uh, simplify the overall experience because this, this this feature is no longer needed. And so as I go through each of these examples, uh, you will see um, how they fit in with the discover build sunset process. And hopefully it'll give you some idea of how to use product metrics in practice. So the first one, discover running experiments. You know, running experiments is a great way to collect data early on in the experience. Uh, or you know, when you're looking at solving a problem and you, and you, you think you're on the right direction, but you're not quite sure, it's time to run an experiment. First off, you got to design it. What are the things that you're looking to learn? Uh, what are some of the hypotheses that you have about the problem statement at hand? And then how do you think about measuring success of your hypothesis? What, what is it going to look like if that hypothesis is proven true versus proven false? And so you write all that down, you design how you're going to collect your results. You then co conduct the experiment analyze the results and, and determine whether or not you move forward, whether or not you stop, and, and, and really what are those next steps here. So I'm going to walk you through um, a few different examples, different types of experiments. The first one is a prototype and concept or concept test. So this is, you have a feature, you've, you've, you have a UI, you think this is the right thing for you to, to build, and you can run this test uh, you can bring this in front of users. You can start to test overall comprehension and satisfaction. Are they able to uh, get value out of this feature? Do, do they, are they excited about this feature? Will it solve their problem? The second one is a conversion test. So if you give them some sort of prompt, uh, do they use the feature? Uh, do they click on it? And um, you know, based on those numbers, what, are you gonna move forward uh, with that idea and that concept? And the third type of experiment here is A-B test. So you have two different approaches. You're not sure which one will work better. You run an A-B test to get some data to determine which approach makes more sense. So I'm gonna walk through a Pendo example. This is something that I did early on in my tenure at Pendo. Uh, we were building out a new analytics feature um, that focused on kind of higher level metrics for director level and above. And we didn't know what to name it. One idea was portfolio and the other idea was executive. And so we decided to run an AB test and we threw a purple buttons on the dashboard uh, for half of the director level and above segment, we gave them the name portfolio. And for the other half, 
of the segment, we showed them executive dashboard. And these are the results that we collected from our experiment. When they clicked on a badge, whatever it said, they would get a brief survey, a prototype, as well as a few questions. And then we would ask them if they want to talk with us further about this concept. And what we found was really interesting. Uh, with portfolio, 17.4% of the folks clicked on the badge. And of the folks that got through to the end of the survey, uh, eight of 19 people agreed to talk with us. With the executive dashboard, 31% of users clicked on the badge and 18 out of the 31 that got to that final step said that they wanted to talk to us. And so when looking at this data, it became pretty clear that executive dashboard was resonating more with our users. And so we moved forward with uh, that option. Okay, so now I wanna cover off on measuring feature success. Uh, this is absolutely in the build part of the product development process. You have, you're in the process of building a feature or you're about to release a new feature. It's time to think about success. So I'm gonna cover off on uh, an example. Uh, so let's Im imagine uh, that you are a product manager for a, a product, a food delivery service, and you're looking at introducing uh, new recommendations uh, for restaurants based on location, based on preference. And so how might you think about measuring success of a new feature like that? Well, you could look at overall usage. You know, set a target. Let's say you want to see a thousand people click on that in the first 30 days or something like that. Maybe you create a goal uh, and you, you start to measure that goal and you see, did you hit that uh, number or not? Or you could take a look at stickiness uh, of the people that used this feature in the first 30 days. How, what was the likelihood that they used it uh, a second time or a third time? So, what's the overall stickiness of this feature itself? Maybe you look at a funnel here. Are users actually completing the task? When they use the feature, do they actually deliver food at the end of the day? And you can start to track you know, uh, the number of folks that clicked and then what's the drop-off rate at each step before they actually order takeout. Uh, if this number is good, let's say 20% actually order takeout, maybe you stop. But if it's not quite as good, it's a little bit lower, maybe you have discussions about how you can improve the overall experience in order to ensure that, that that task completion rate goes up. The important part here, uh, when you're looking at launching a new feature is define success upfront. What does success look like? What are the measurements that you need to put in place? Then you be can begin measuring after the release uh, so that you can start to collect data and understand, um, have you reached success or not? Uh, and then you iterate. So there's two ways of iterating. You can either look at the numbers and, and realize that maybe your measure, your success metric was not quite accurate. You can change that measurement and, and, and understand whether or not you've hit success or not. Or you can start to determine how do you improve the feature over time? How do you make it better so that you can really hit that success metric? Okay, so the third area I wanna talk about now is sunsetting. So sunsetting is probably one of the most important parts of the overall uh, experience of building products. It's, it's one of the hardest jobs of the product manager, uh, and it is something that is really important to get good at. Uh, most, a lot of times, a uh, product or a feature will, um, it'll, it'll, there won't be any need to continue it in the product. If you get rid of it, it simplifies the overall experience and it's a good thing to do, but it can be challenging. So while most of the product analytics is used to increase adoption over time, when you sunset a product, you're focused on decreasing adoption over time. You wanna ensure that users stop using this feature so that you can effectively sunset it for all of your users. There's different ways of doing this. Uh, first, you, you, you can remove the ability for new users to see the feature. So if they log into your platform, uh, they never, they, they have no ability to access, access that feature and your, your usage is gonna drop because of that. This way, they will never, ever miss it because they've never known it exists, which is a great way to, to, to immediately re, uh, decrease adoption. Then you can direct existing users to a new page or feature uh, when they click on the one that you're trying to sunset. So let's say they, they go into a um, you know, feature. It's the one that you're trying to deprecate. You, you navigate them away to something else that solves their need. And then you um, hopefully they stay there. They get their value. 
Um, but the important part of that is you want to give them an easy way to come back to the previous feature um, so that they don't feel angry uh, and they can express their frustration for, for the fact that you might be deprecating something that they really love using that, that is part of their workflow. An important part there is that you give them the ability to give you feedback about why they want to continue using the feature so that you can make the other one better. You also need to allow ample time for existing users to transition. Uh, users and people in general, humans hate change. And anytime you, you tell them something that's going to go away, there will be a few folks that have strong negative reactions to that. So give them time to process that, give them time to try the new functionality before you take it away from them. Um, but getting to uh, good at sunsetting features is really important. And you can use product analytics in order to help you do that. So we've covered off on different ways, you know, uh, examples of, in each of these to practically use product analytics within your uh, product management jobs. So focusing on discovery, building new features, as well as sunsetting features or products uh, when their time is over. With that, I'm going to move to how to get started. Um, how, what are the you know, different things that you could start doing today to, to grow into your product analytics um, uh, expertise? You know, this is an, a journey. It's going to take you a long time to really good at, at, at get really good at measuring success and understanding um, you know, uh, how do you uh, think about this? How do you start to measure? How do you keep yourself accountable for actually making improvements in your product? So start somewhere, start anywhere. First, define what success looks like for a feature that you're working on right now. Uh, maybe you're going through uh, in your, your classroom or, or at your job, you're thinking about a product or a feature that you want to improve. Well, think about what success looks like. What do you want to see your users do um, for those features? Second, just create a dashboard with those metrics. Uh, you know, hopefully you have uh, some sort of platform that you can use to collect some product analytics create that dashboard and just start looking at it on a weekly basis. Um, third, start to set targets. Where do you wanna see those numbers go? Um, and begin to record, maybe in a spreadsheet, maybe somewhere else, record what you're seeing, start to uh, you know, have discussions about, are you on the right track to reaching success or do you need to spend more time? And then fourth, iterate on the feature based on these success measures. Either you realize the success measure needs to be changed because you, know, you, you didn't set it right the first time, or maybe you need to iterate on the feature and make it better, uh, add additional capabilities to it in order to uh, ensure that customers are getting the value that you're hoping to provide. But again, I think the important part is that you start talking about it and you just start measuring. So with that, I want to thank you all for coming to this presentation and, and listening. And um, you know, if you have any additional questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn, Stephanie Tanzer, uh, or feel, feel free to drop me an email at stephanie at pendo.io. Have a great day.